it is my pleasure and an honor to introduce you to Council Member Paul Kukorian. Thank you very much, Aroxy. And let's give Aroxy another hand for what a great job she's doing in seeing. You know, we're so proud of you, Araxia, every night or every morning when we see you on, on Fox 11. But for those of you who don't know, uh, Araxia comes from a family uh, who was from Gyumri. And Araxia was there when the earthquake devastated Gyumri. She is a survivor of one of the most difficult hours in Armenian history as well. And her being here today with us is another symbol of our victory over even the most difficult of times. So Araxia, thank you very, very much for being here. And I want to thank uh, all of the leaders of our city who are here. I see so many of our general managers, of course, our elected leaders from Los Angeles, from Burbank, from Glendale, from, uh, from Montebello, and, and many other places. Um, it means so much to us that we come together today as one family here in Los Angeles, a family made up of people who came from many places, a family made up of people of many faiths, of many backgrounds. Uh, but today we come together as one, and I can tell you that it means a great deal to the Armenian American community uh, that all of you are here with us uh, on this centennial commemoration. In a few moments, the mayor and I are going to step over and plant a pomegranate tree. It's going to be the first of 100 pomegranate trees that are planted throughout the city of Los Angeles in commemoration of the victims of the Armenian Genocide, but also as a reminder uh, of the lessons of the Armenian Genocide and our continuing survival. In many cultures, the pomegranate represents fertility and abundance, Hindu, Buddhist cultures, um, many cultures throughout the world recognize the importance of the pomegranate. Uh, you see in Renaissance paintings by Botticelli, by Da Vinci, by many others, the pomegranate as a representation of um, the fullness of pain and sacrifice of, uh, of Christians and also of resurrection. The pomegranate symbolizes all those things. In the Jewish tradition, the pomegranate is said to be one of the fruits that was brought to Moses as a symbol of the fertility of the promised land. But it's also a symbol in the Jewish tradition of righteousness, because a pomegranate is said to have 613 seeds, one seed for each of God's law in the Torah. So in many, many cultures around the world, we share this symbolism of the pomegranate. But for Armenian people, the pomegranate has a, a great and special significance. It is the symbol of the Armenian people. It is a symbol that represents pain and suffering, but it's also a symbol uh, of our continuity over the course of hundreds of generations. Since the genocide, it's taken on a special significance, of course, of the pain that we experienced then, but also as a symbol of life everlasting. It's a symbol of our victory over genocide as well. This pomeg the pomegranates that are on this tree that we're going to be planting here symbolize an ancient culture, a culture that enriched the, the known world, throughout the known world, even before Julius Caesar was born. It's a culture that, because of the Armenian Genocide, was violently stripped from our homeland of over three millennia. Churches during the Genocide, churches that were already hundreds of years old before Columbus set sail, were desecrated, were destroyed. In its despicable brutality, its unimaginable violence, and its sheer scale, the Armenian Genocide was unprecedented in modern times. Armenians suffered the unimaginable loss of the death of children, of siblings, of parents, of friends, of loved ones, in unimaginable numbers. 
and that pain is one that continues to echo in many of us still today. But I think it's important to note that the world suffered great loss during that time too. It wasn't just our families who suffered the death of loved ones. The world suffered great loss in the destruction of that culture in that homeland, in the loss of potential of what might have been. It's almost um, unimaginable to think what could have been had that genocide not occurred. There are countless symphonies that went, went unwritten, countless paintings that went unpainted, scientific developments that didn't happen, uh, medical discoveries that might have saved countless lives. All of these were the things that could have been created by one of those children who were lost in the genocide, by one of those people who were marched out into the deserts of Derzor. And because of that loss, we all lost so much. But we also know this about Los Angeles. Los Angeles didn't sit idly by. As the mayor alluded to earlier, this city, as it has done in so much of its history, opened its arms to the people who survived the genocide. The people of this city stood with people throughout our country and supported the efforts of Near East Relief in raising the equivalent of almost $3 billion in today's money to save the lives of Armenians and Greeks and Assyrians and so many others who'd been orphaned uh, by the genocide. And had it not been for those efforts, had it not been for those efforts, many of us who are standing here today might not have been here uh, alive today. There were very few Armenian families here at that time. Mine was one of them. There were maybe a few hundred at the time. But that didn't stop Los Angeles from stepping up and doing the right thing, from helping those who needed help. It was the first great philanthropic effort in this nation's history where Americans stood up to help people in foreign lands. And Los Angeles played such a key part in that. And that was an effort that has shaped our character and our, gener our values of generosity that, have, uh, that continue to, to linger even today in the city. And like so many other groups of immigrants, both before and since, the Armenians who arrived here in the beginning of the 20th century, throughout that century, more in the 70s, and then even more now, those Armenian Americans, the, those who survived their progeny, uh, have contributed disproportionately to the success of this country and of this city. They've enriched the fabric of our city in their extraordinary contributions to culture, to the arts, uh, to music, to the sciences, to technology, to agriculture, to business, and in so many other ways, Armenian Americans have disproportionately influenced the city that we now know and enjoy. And in every one of those victories, every one of the victories by everyone who's here, we have achieved victory over death. We've achieved victory over barbarism and bigotry. We have proven, with all of those individual victories taken together, we've proven that the efforts by those who would have wiped us from the earth failed. We've proven that instead of being buried, the Armenian people have risen. And although a 100 years have passed, Although a hundred years have passed since that horror began, it still remains vitally important to remember those lessons today. Because we know that because of the impunity, because of the lack of accountability, because the perpetrators of that genocide were not held to account, were not held to justice, it opened up the door to so many more atrocities that would happen throughout the 20th century and are even happening today as we talk right this minute in Darfur and many other places of our world where tyrants, where terrorists feel that they've gotten a signal, a signal that you can engage in this kind of violence, you can engage in this kind of atrocity, and with the passage of time, it'll be forgotten. That's what Turkey thinks. That's why 100 years still uh, later, 100 years later, Turkey is still denying its culpability. 
and how shameful it is that our own government is complicit in that denial. How shameful it is that our president and our Congress still again today have failed to tell Turkey that no, we do not accept your denial of accountability and instead they should say we will hold you accountable. Turkey hopes that with the passage of time, we'll forget, we'll forgive. Eventually, we'll just, the world will just move on. But here in Los Angeles, we haven't forgotten. We cannot forget. We'll never forget because we know that denial is the final act of genocide. After the homes and the churches are ashes, after the bodies have become dust, the last evidence to be extinguished is memory. And when that memory is extinguished, only then will the annihilation be complete and the crime a success. But we're here in Los Angeles, we're here to tell Turkey and the world that we remember and we will continue to remember and we will always demand justice. Because the Armenian Genocide is not just a page out of a history book. The Armenian Genocide and its perpetrator's denial continues to shape our world today. We've seen that the world will continue to suffer genocide until we reject hate in all of its forms and hold accountable the perpetrators of all crimes against humanity. That's why the struggle for recognition and justice for the Armenian Genocide is not an Armenian struggle. It's a universal struggle. It must always be all of our struggle, whether you're Armenian or not Armenian. All of us have to continue to commit ourselves to persevering in that struggle to the end. And we must be equally committed to fighting bigotry and hatred and violence in all of their forms, whoever is the victim, everywhere it exists. And if we do so, if we make that commitment together, only then, when we see the pain of all of our brothers and sisters as if it's our own, only then will we finally and truthfully be able to say, never again. Every time this world witnesses a recurrence of genocide or atrocities, and we don't act to stop it, or don't act to hold people accountable. Every time we avert our gaze because it's too hard to think about, it's too hard to look at. Every time a tyrant or a terrorist avoids accountability for the unspeakable acts of barbarism and cruelty that we see on Araxia's newscasts and other newscasts every single day even now, every time that happens, each of us suffers a loss of our own humanity. We become more calloused. We become more immune to outrage. And as we allow ourselves the luxury of choosing not to experience that searing pain that has to accompany all atrocities like that, we guarantee that the next atrocity is going to be that much more likely to occur. So today we remember. We remember to mourn those who perished. We remember to honor all of those who've survived and who've flourished. We remember to thank America and California and Los Angeles for having stepped up and embraced us and given us the opportunity to survive and to succeed. And most important, we remember today for the sake of our own humanity and preserving it. As Araxia mentioned, um, all this week, City Hall is bathed in purple light. I want to thank the mayor for his partnership in this and everything else that we've done together with my colleagues on the council to make this commemoration special and unique in the centennial year. And I'm sure there's people all over Los Angeles and probably in other places as well who are wondering, why is City Hall, that iconic building that is so recognizable, why is it purple? And when we answer that question, it gives us the opportunity again to teach these universal lessons about the Armenian Genocide. It gives us a, an opportunity to remember, but it also gives us an opportunity to teach. And City Hall takes its rightful place as that beacon of hope that we've always known it to be. Lighting the building in purple, I, we didn't intend it at the time, but it reminded me of a poem 
by Siamanto, who, as many of you know, was one of the first victims of the genocide, the great Armenian poet, Siamanto, who wrote, and the spirits of all the dead tonight, through my own eyes and soul, are awaiting the dawning of the light, so that to humanize the cruelty of our inhuman lives, perhaps from above, a drop of light may fall upon the murdered and the murderer alike. By your presence here today, each of you, by your commitment to the struggle for justice, each one of you provides that drop of light. May we all move together forever out of the darkness and into the dawn. Thank you all very, very much for being here.